Welcome to the Wasika Small Town Big Stories podcast, sponsored by Bird's Eye Foods and iTron. I'm your host, Ann Fitch, the Executive Director of the Wasika Area Chamber of Commerce, where we promote business and enhance community. Today, I'm joined at the Suburban Furniture Table with Tom Sankovitz and Bernie Gako from Keen Bank. Welcome, you guys. Well, thank Welcome. you. Thank Glad you. to be here. I'm happy you're here. Now, a little bit later, I'll be joined by Alyssa Bowers and Sarah Lynch from your mortgage department. For now, we're going to talk to you two about the uh, the history of Keen Bank, the name change to Keen Bank, and of course, how you two uh, rose to stardom here at Keen Bank in this in this family bank. Awesome. Now, Love to hear your questions. Oh gosh, I can't <laughs> wait to hear what I ask you either. <laughs> now, Tom, you're part of the sink of its family. Correct. I grew up in Wasika. So whether that's good or bad, everybody knows what I did when I was younger. <laughs> and everybody knows me. And if you don't, uh, you can ask me and I'll tell you. <laughs> Absolutely. You'll tell the real story. Yeah. So, um, yeah, grew up in Wasika, uh, played in the high school f- sports and things like that, and just kind of went through life in Wasika. I went off to Market University for two and a half years and then graduated from the University of St. Thomas. Came back here in ni- December of 1992. Oh my gosh, that seems like a lifetime ago, Tom. Yeah, came back as uh, Cliff Middlestead, one of our longtime uh, CFO and auditor, was getting ready to retire. So came back and took his, learned from him and took his position after he retired. So Now, how long were you Clint's understudy? Cliff. Uh, Pardon me, Cliff. Yep. Uh, probably three, four years, right? three to four years before he retired. Yep. Okay. And what was your degree at St. Thomas? Uh, accounting, basically. Okay. okay. And then Bernie, how did you how did you get in with the Sink of its family? Well, I met my lovely bride Anne at the University of St. Thomas. Back then, back then it was the College of St. Thomas in 1985. And we started dating, married in 88, and uh, spent about eight years working for uh, Nestle Food Company and Borden Food Company and moved about eight times. And my father-in-law and Tom kept talking to me after each move and saying, you should really come back and work at the family bank. And I would say no. And then we had our son, brought him home to an empty house. And my father-in-law came to visit again and said, you should really come back and work at the family bank. We'd, we'd like to have you back. And, and we, we rolled the dice and in 1995, mm-hmm. moved to Wasika and brought our young son here and, and have been a, a, a Wasikan ever since then. I know you're not, not truly a Wasikan unless you were born here, but I feel as close as I can get. Nope, nope, I've always said, if you work here, you live here, That's you're right. a Wasikan. Doesn't matter how long you've been here. Now, what were your reservations, Bernie? Um, I had a good career going, and I was moving every year and getting promoted, and, and my folks were, I grew up in the Minnetonka area, so mm-hmm. my folks and my family were all up in the metro area, and I didn't think that my children would get to know my, uh, my nieces and nephews and their cousins and their grandparents, and I wanted to get closer to the Midwest, so mm-hmm. I wanted to come back here and and I had a degree in finance and marketing, so I, I always thought that banking could be an industry and, and something that I would enjoy doing. And um, like I said, uh, came back and uh, haven't looked back. It's been a great stretch. I think it's been, what, 20, 27 years now. 20-some years. Yeah, we'll go with 20-some. Yeah, exactly. I'm the finance guy. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, Tom's got the accounting degree. That's right. He'll correct me when we're done. Yeah, we'll let him deal with the actual numbers. Now, Tom, how many sink of its kids are there? Uh, There was, there is, or was five of us. My sister, Kate, passed away um, a few years ago. So she had a health condition. So there is now um, myself, Anne is the oldest. And then Kate was the second child. I was the middle child. And then Liz and Jim. So Liz is a nurse up in the cities. Jim is out in uh, Utah. He's an attorney. He's worked on several different projects over the years. So, so really just you and Ann are the ones that are involved in the business because Ann, Ann does some things with the bank, a little HR here and there. She'll tell you she runs it. She, she does sure. payroll. Sure. So she's one of the most popular people at the bank every <laughs> other week. And she runs our special events and our travel program that – has been very successful for us. So yes, Anne's there every day and everyone loves her. Yeah, talk about that travel program because I followed uh, followed Keen on, on social media and you guys just got back from Iceland. 
My mother-in-law started that. Actually, Barbara Sankovic started that years ago. It was a seniors club, and they would have weekly and monthly events. They'd play bingo. They'd go to movies. Um, and then they'd have mystery trips, and occasionally they would have a, a European travel or an Alaskan travel. And we, we had a director running that program, and um, Carol Wabshaw that did a fantastic job for us, and she moved on to other things, and Anne said she'd love to take the travel piece of that because she really loves travel, and she got her hooks into that, and, and she's really, we, we have a trip coming up. We just got back from Iceland mm -hmm. about a week ago, and we had about 40 people on that trip, and she did a Mediterranean cruise that is set up for fall of next year, and 70 people actually sold out, so we... Sheesh. We have 70 people going there, and we're hoping that the itinerary still maintains through because some of that is is uh, visiting Jerusalem and some of the other areas that are under conflict right now. So, uh, but it's been a, a great program. You know, a lot of the seniors and a lot of the people that that want to travel but don't know how to travel, and they want to be taken care of from having a bus bring us up to the airport mm -hmm. to handling all the transfers and making sure everything goes smoothly. We do a, a really good job t being with people the entire trip and making sure that they have a great time. That's a benefit of being a keen customer, correct? Exactly. Yes. Oh, neat. How oh, neat. Now, can, can you differentiate between your two roles? Um, because as, as someone who doesn't think about who runs a bank, you, know, you just get your checking account, your savings account, the CFO seems like they'd be the one in charge. You're the chief financial officer. Now, Bernie, this is a, this. Is, I, I I really mean this question. What do you do? You know, I I had look at everything we do as a team concept. There's not a lot of hierarchy at the bank. Tom and I do everything together. Um, Tom, there's nothing that that happens around the bank that we don't all have our hands into. Mm -hmm. Tom is the technical, the IT, um, with his accounting degree. He's, he does a lot of the internal audits and, and, and helps uh, assist in a lot of those capacities. Um, all the, the products that we have to install and as things become more computerized and we become more dependent on programs, uh, that's really a, an area that he does very good in. I do, uh, the overall management of the bank from um, running the asset liability committee meetings to um, setting setting pricing and sitting uh, on, on the loan committees and and managing all of the the people and a strategic planning is a is a big part of that too but again mm -hmm. there's there's not really too much you know tom and Tom and I are together for a long time and and daily and there's not um, really a barrier between our two offices, although they're on the other sides of the building, uh, there's not too much we don't run by each other. So we, we do run it as a family, and, you know, when we're off of work, we, we talk about it. We get together as a family, and my father-in-law, Richard, who's the, the chair emeritus, and he'll always have a place at the bank, you know, he, he still wants to know what's going on. So we, we can never escape it when you're a family-run business. I think those that that um, have family-owned businesses understand that. When Tom and I first started at the bank, we had we we painted the tunnel of the bank by hand with, <laughs> and we we the sprayed that room. yeah the boiler room. I mean we were we were coughing <laughs> paint for about a week, and and so you know it it doesn't matter if there needs to be, you know things picked up in a parking lot or if there needs to be a light bulb switched or. Uh, if there needs to be something that happens over the weekend, we're always the first ones there. And I, I would not have wanted to take this journey without my brother-in-law. Yeah, it's from getting phone calls on a Saturday to calling each other. Hey, um, yes. <laughs> we need to help this person. So we do a little bit of everything. Bernie's more, I'm more of a numbers guy. I like books, taxes, that kind of thing. Bernie's more of the person, you know, he's the upfront person, more... Uh, knows everybody and keeps track of everything. Um, that way, I'm more. I know the numbers. <laughs> and one of the things that's important for me is is to be with our customers where they are. Um, I, I'm out in the field a lot, uh, hearing about people's businesses and going with our loan officers to um, sales calls with with uh, with our customers. And there's a lot of customers that have never stepped foot in Keen Bank and we can provide them the type of service they need with our electronic offerings and our cash management services. And 
um, where we go to them. So that served us well when the banking crisis hit in 2008 and continues to serve us well because we care about our, our customers and, and we'll go to their place of, of business to, to learn about what they're doing and they really take pride in showing us what they're doing, which is nice. I love that it's uh, it truly is run like a family and it's cohesive um, and that you and your brother-in-law are getting along and running this business successfully because um, running a business with family can be stressful and uh, I'm sure there's butting heads at times. And when you when you get together for holidays and you're having Thanksgiving, um, is there times where maybe Gretchen and Ann are like, can you just shut it off? Can you not talk about the bank? Is there, can we just have the turkey? <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that that's really an issue. I think... Good. I think that um, we, we can balance both of those and, and keep them in perspective. Um, I think a lot of it, we leave office at the office, and when we do have family events, if somebody asks us from the family a question right. or something, we'll answer it, but otherwise, we know Monday we'll be back in the office, we can finish it up. And my, my brother-in-law, Jim, Tom's brother is on our board, and so is my sister-in-law, Liz. So they get to hear what's going on, and, and they get a lot of the recaps of, of what's happening and, and part of the decision-making on the front end, which is nice. So there's not a lot of business that needs to be discussed outside of that because we do meet on a monthly basis. But um, I, I, don't, I, think, I think as a family-owned business, we just worry about everything all the time. You never get a day off. If, if, you know, someone, if someone takes an opportunity somewhere else, you, you deal with that. If, mm -hmm. if someone's child is sick, you deal with that. If some, somebody has a crisis personally, you deal with that. We have, you know, one of the things I'm most proud of is that we are intertwined with the lives of close to 40 people and their families, and that's a tremendous impact. And I, I never take that lightly. And I think one of the things that you'll talk to our employees about and what they appreciate is the family atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Because I do tell the employees that, that family is very important to me. They saw my kids grow up in the bank. They saw Tom's okay. kids grow up in the bank. And we've seen their kids grow up in the bank. And and I don't take that lightly. At the end of the day, you want to work for someone that, that has the same values that you do. And all of our employees, and, and I don't like to use the word employees, all of our team members, they know that if they have a crisis at home, they don't have to come into our office scared about asking for time off or scared about saying, hey, this is, this is happening. That we're like, absolutely go. We will cover it. Right. We will find a way to get through this. What's important is you be with, with your family right now in this time of need. So I, I think no matter how the bank proceeds forward, and it will maintain a, being a family-owned and, and managed operation, but those ideals will be important regardless where we go and how big we get, that we can still portray those same characteristics to our team. Both of you mentioned your, your children. Uh, is, there, is there interest from any of the Sankovitz Geico children to, to come work at the bank? Well, I think we're still kind of exploring that. We've Tom's got a son that's in, in banking right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we both have not tried to pave a, uh, a path that this is an expectation. I've got two boys, and, and you know, they did not work at the bank in, in high school and um, are pursuing their own interests right now. So I think we see the benefit of having family because at the end of the day, when, when something goes wrong, um, it's nice to know that, that you have a family member there to take care of things. So I, I won't speak yeah. for Tom's children, but we've, we've, we've always said that uh, should someone have the skills that are needed at the time that they're needed and they have some outside experience, mm -hmm. because we always thought that that was an important thing to be able to bring back, that uh, we, would, we would look at going to the next generation. And you know, being the oldest of the family with the oldest children, uh, we still have... Uh, you know, some of the family members with kids in junior high and high school. Yeah. And so who knows what path that will take, but it's not an expectation. And we're going to continue to, to drive and manage the bank for whatever the situation is. Tom? Yep. You know, we, we didn't push our kids that direction either. So it's, it's kind of up to them when they're ready or if they're ready or if they want to. It's never been, I don't think any of my brothers and sisters have kind of stretch that or push that at all so i think it's just a matter of the individual and 
and timing, like Bernie said, if we have the position and they have the skills and they want to come back, then definitely we'll, we'll have a conversation at the time. You know, I, I've never felt that I wanted to paint half a picture and then tell my children they've got to finish the painting, you know, if, mm-hmm. and, you know, I've seen that in too many instances where people were there for the wrong reasons and it's not necessarily always successful. And I just think they should go find their passion. They should be told what to do. They should have promotion somewhere else. They should work for somebody else and, um, and not as a, not as a fallback have the bank, but as an opportunity. And hopefully someday we're trying to recruit somebody with the skill set that that's needed. Well, I think both of you 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 had your own paths before you came to Keene back then, First National Bank. Um, so I think it's very uh, I think it's acceptable that you say you know come if you want to, um, don't come because we want you to or you think right. you have to. Um, I think then they'll, they'll appreciate it more if they, if it's their choice. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, last year Keen Bank won the Chamber's Impact Award for, for your exceptional giving into the community. Can you talk about where the Blue Jay debit card and the Panther debit card started from and, and where that idea came from and, and how much money you've been able to give back to those two school districts? You know, we'd love to talk about that because that's obviously something we're very proud of. You know, a number of years ago, and I can't go back to the the year exactly, but the school was facing a lot of cutbacks, and they were having a difficult time getting referendums and bonds approved, and they were cutting programs. and And Tom and I wanted to do something for for the bank, and we thought one of one of the neat things to do at the time was to brand our our debit cards yep. so people could have the school pride <laughs> mm-hmm. when they went and they paid for something and and we we found out that it was a lot of work to go ahead and do that, do that. <laughs> Just like custom plastics alone but then we but then we said well let's let's give part of the interchange fee back to the school and we track that and and you know we started out having a an advisory board with the school mm-hmm. and then that kind of that kind of morphed into hooking up with the foundation. And then, and then recently that's kind of moved more into um, taking all of our debit card interchange. In the past it was just the Blue Jay and the Panther, and the Panther would go to New Richland. Now all of our cards, regardless of whether they're business cards, whether they're personal cards, whether they're ATM cards, oh. um, yep. now we're taking all that money and we're, we're taking earmarking a percentage of that and giving it back to all the area schools so it doesn't have to just be um the blue jays and and from a from a a plastics and some of the logistics of having the custom plastics when we did the name change Mm -hmm. and went with the chip technology it just became too um, difficult to manage the different Mm -hmm. different cards that we have and and we want people to be proud to use their Keen Bank card and and promote our brand because um, you know it's one of the things about the rebrand. I, I tell everybody, you know, we could be called whatever we want to be called. We could be Google. No one heard of Google before they they came up right. with that. But when people think of Keen Bank five years from now, they're going to think of who we are and our character and our personalities and our service level. So I want people to use that card and be proud of using that card and, and pull that out and, and get the brand recognition for that and, and still give money back in, in the same way that we have. But to your question of how much we've given to date, I, I don't know if we've got an exact count on it, but I know it's approaching close to half a million dollars. Probably a little over, but I remember that first year we had, what, $4,000 and we were trying right. to sort out all those requests. <laughs> and now it's, you know, it's just... I don't know, we're close there's, to 30000 a year now if it goes wow. back to it. There's not an wow. initiative that we're not part of somehow. So we, we, we look at all of those. I think part of the, uh, the, part of the difficulty has been, and maybe this podcast will help, at getting the word out and getting people to, to apply for those. And, you know, one of the requirements that we thought were important early on that we mm-hmm. still live by is it has to have the greatest amount of impact on the greatest amount of kids for a long period of time so as much as we'd love to bring a speaker in for a night Mm -hmm. that's not going to be something that qualifies but if someone needs smart boards it's going to to last you know five to ten years and or a reading program or equipment that that helps a certain number of children that's 
that's what we want to do is put our money where the greatest, the greatest need is and helps the greatest number of children. So I want to make sure I'm clear. So <clears throat> when someone swipes their keen debit card, that transfer fee, or Correct. Interchange, interchange fee, yep. fee, thank you, gets put into a fund that a school can, tr can apply for grant dollars for, uh, for something in their district for, whether it's uh, Wasika or New Richland. Correct. And not just or teachers. It could be Oatana now. Or Oatana yeah. now with your new Correct. location that we'll talk about in a couple seconds. Uh, interesting. And that's given out at the same time that the um, Area Foundation gives out their grant dollars? We try to keep the same schedule just so we're not every week and every, every month. Mm -hmm deciding what we're going to do but um, that seems to work out well that we do it twice a year and then we collect yeah. them and unless there's something pending that absolutely must get a get approved we try to go that route too that's and, fantastic that is absolutely fantastic and where would uh where would a teacher or a classroom find that grant application keen.bank it's Keen. out there on Bank. our website there on should the website. be a tab under there and uh, they should be able to fill that out and then submit it in and now the Oatana school district will be able to benefit from that as well let's talk Correct. about your new location you know, we're excited about that. We, we're, we're going to service a lot of our existing customers, and that's why that made it such a nice entry into that market. When we looked at where our footprint was between Wasika, Ellendale, and Hope, a majority of our customers that we had in the Hope market lived in the Oatana market. Hmm. And some of my key officers uh, live in the Oatana market okay. with uh, Steve Graff and, and Pat Sigler and... Um, and a couple of the new employees that we have there obviously are going to live in the old town of market, but we really know the market well. We know, we know the customers well and having a location just made sense from us from a, from a technical standpoint, as we were looking at having to staff and maintain, uh, coverage in the hope market, we saw that we could go into the old town of market and increase our level of service. We could add drive through, we could have mm -hmm. drive through hours. We could be open on Saturday. We can offer an ATM machine. We can have a full service mortgage department there. And those are things that it just didn't make sense to do in the hope market. So it, it feels very natural to go into the Oatana market and it's so easy to get to also and just in our backyard. So it's been a, it, we, we're planning to open November 6th, 6th no, <laughs> Monday, November 6th. So Coming up. the signage just went up today. So if you're, watching this later your sign is already up but we were excited about the the progress and how it's going and we were lucky enough to find an old building that had not been yeah. being used for probably six years so had we have had to gone into that market and built uh, i think it would have probably not made sense from a financial standpoint but buying a building that was basically in good shape but was not being utilized so we were able to go in and breathe some life into an existing building and um, and totally redo the the inside. So it's going to feel, all of our banks will feel the same way as far as colors, looks, and uh, same carpets, same colors, same, same furniture and fixtures. So they'll all have the same theme. So there'll be a consistent feel throughout all locations. Well, we'd love to see a Wasika business expand. And so congratulations on your new location. Thank you. Love it. Thank Absolutely you. Absolutely love it. With the new location, uh, gentlemen, I want to talk about, we're going to talk about the name change, Keen Bank. Um, how long has it been since you changed your name? Now, I understand why, why you changed, but we're going we're gonna to give you an opportunity to tell everybody why you changed and where Keen came from. I really like Keen. <laughs> Thank you. I enjoy it. It makes me feel like a banking hug <laughs> has wrapped its arms around me. So let's, let's talk about it. You know, I, I've been telling the story for a year consistently, and, and I'm always excited to tell it. And I, 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 a number of years ago, were looking at the First National Bank of Wasika, and anyone that does any advertising or layout and design, anything from T-shirts that had the First National Bank of Wasika on it with a small little logo to you would sit there and look at a billboard or a scoreboard and be able to read all the other advertisements. And First National Bank always looks so small. You know, it, it didn't lay out well, and and then I started looking, like when we purchased the Bank of Ellendale and Hope, 
we had to go into their market, which took a lot of pride in their community. It was the Bank of Ellendale, and we purchased it. And we had to brand on the building the First National Bank of Wasika Ellendale office, which really doesn't ingratiate yourself to a community when the, the big town of Wasika is coming in and, right. and taking something over. So I looked at moving forward, and when we made the decision as a family to uh, continue to, to grow the business and to really invest in, in growing the business, uh, Tom and I said we need to do that with a different name. So I, I started that. I put it in their ear probably five years ago, and and of course it's like wow. That's... How much did he put it in their ear, Tom? <laughs> oh, it started maybe five six years ago, and yeah. then once we actually got serious, it took three years to finally get to the final product and get changed. Well, it's a tough journey because if you think of a great bank name, it it could be you know, whatever sounds like a great bank name, if you Google it, it exists in the finance and banking world. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's someone came up, well, Chartwell, hey, that sounds great, Chartwell. Well, it, it doesn't exist. Or, I mean, it does, it does exist, exist yeah. out there. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so we had a whiteboard um, in the bank, and every day I'd say, hey, if you got a name, put it on there. And we had probably 20 names. And, sure. and so then every time we would say, well, how about this name? We'd have, well, how about this, this, and this name? And, and it got to the point where it was Google the name before you even give it to me to make sure it doesn't exist <laughs> because we want to make sure that we own the name. We And, and when you Google, and another issue with First National Bank, people would drive up from Iowa and say, you know, we bank with you in Iowa. And we're like, no, you really don't. We're, we're just a family Trust operation. Me, you don't. So people, people don't look at First National Bank as being a family owned and ran business. They look mm -hmm. at it as a branch of a Wells Fargo or a big bank. Right. Cause there's First National Bank. Correct. In Everywhere. All, in a lot of communities all over. Like and if say. I was, if I was out and up in the cities with a customer or in town with a customer and someone said, Hey, I ran into a Bernie that works for First National and they Google First National, they'll get 200 banks, mm -hmm. and they may or may not ever find a Bernie or, or the right one. So now if they see Keen Bank, and they say, well, that's kind of cool. I wonder where they are. They type in Keen Bank, and they're like, well, it's a small little operation. That's kind of mm -hmm. cool. I think when we started, there was 52 First National Banks in Minnesota. Correct. Holy when we God. started the name Charters, process. not and then yeah. all the yeah. branches even add more. Wow. So we started the process, and we said, this is why we have to change. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so then we, so how we got on the Keen Bank, we had an advertising agency that, that came up with all of these names for us. And one of them, they say, hey, I got a million dollar idea, Gopher Bank. And I'm like, Gopher what? Bank? I'm like, that seems like TCF. We don't mm -hmm. look or feel like a Gopher Bank. That's not the heart of us. So, so when we, um, we, we hired Brianna Workey to come on board with us, and she came from Presence Maker, which did a lot of, a lot of branding for other companies and she said i want to start over let's find out the heart and soul of the bank who we are so we interviewed customers we interviewed the board we interviewed employees and words like caring um, intuitive enthusiastic fun were all things that described our bank and so they went to work and they came up with four names and it was important for me that we could we own the name and it didn't exist out there if someone googled it well, Keen Bank was one of them. We're like, well, wow, it's it, one of my other requirements was it had to be easy to pronounce and easy to spell. Yes. Easy to put on a shirt logo, mm -hmm. Google. I didn't want to have to combine two words and explain why we were something like that. So, mm -hmm. so Keen, Keen felt like us. I mean, it was enthusiastic. It was fun. It was creative. It was, and and I think you know it it lays out well. It's easy to remember. It's easy to see. Uh, and there's no negative connotation to the word keen. Right. So, um, and, and like I've said before, and I, I continue to say it, whatever Keen Bank is five years from now is going to be the people that are here today to, to talk about it and build it. So we're excited about breathing life into the word and, and making it a bank. And we own all the, the um, website it's addressed with it. And we went to the dot bank mm -hmm. um, website also at the same time which offers more security and and only banks can register as a dot bank so oh. so you can't get a, a falsified email that says keen dot bank because it will not send it's a secure site oh interesting so if someone was trying to scam someone and it came from a keen.com you know immediately it's a scam email correct 
Correct. Huh. That's an interesting layer of security. I like that. So. Yeah, I like I like the Keen the Keen well, name. You. And um, so has it been a year yet? It has been a year. It's hard to imagine that we landed on. And and one of the other things I'm proud of too is we've got a, a great board of directors. I mean, I've got I've got uh, you know Dick Arnold that's been on the board since the '80s. Um, you know, my father-in-law was, was part of this, uh, Chuck Dreesen that's been on the board a long time too. So I've had a lot of people that were very ingrained with first national mm -hmm. bank. And when we brought up the name, we, we had the full layout of the design, the look, the feel. And I said, we're going to throw them one name and see what mm -hmm. they think. Yes. And if they like it, we'll move forward. And if not, we'll go to, to the next name. And they enthusiastically all said, I love it. Now we had, you know, before that, when we were at the other agency, we had one of the names was Borealis Bank. Borealis. I mean. and, and, and I remember my father-in-law saying, Borealis, that sounds like a disease. <laughs> I'm like, and how, how do you even spell it? So, so, so yeah, when, when the word keen came up and they saw the graphics and they saw it, they, they're like, we love it. We love it. So it was important Great. for me that I didn't have to sell them. They knew the need and the the reason for changing the bank name, but I, I, it was important for me, me and and Tom also that because this is a family legacy and this is something that mm -hmm. that they've lived with for a long time. Now this is the third name in our bank's history, but you know we've we've been First National Bank for a long time, and I didn't take that lightly. Changing that name yeah. would yeah. would be tough on them, but they've embraced it. And when we rolled it out, I think the most common question I had is, well, what does Dick think of that? <laughs> and, yeah. and he was he was very enthusiastic and very supportive of changing the name, or else we never would have done it. Oh, of course. And so Keen, First National, what was the first bank name? We were the Bank of Wasika, and then we were Citizens Bank. Okay. And then we became First National Bank, uh, and Otto Bremer owned First National Bank when my... Uh, my grandfather-in-law was a bank examiner and came into mm. the community and he examined the bank and there were some improprieties that he reported at his his um, closing meeting with the bank ownership and they said Frank why don't you come down and and work for our bank so he just had the one child they lived up in St. Paul they moved their family to Wasika and he ran the bank until my father-in-law uh, Richard uh, went to school in, um, in Loris College down mm -hmm. in Dubuque, and then he moved back and said, Dad, we should see if we can buy the bank from Otto. And they talked to Otto, and Otto agreed to sell him some shares. And over the years... Oh, like the Otto Bremer. Otto, the Otto, Otto Bremer. Bremer. There's the a Otto picture Bremer. of him. There was a picture of him in our boardroom, and, huh. and he was getting... It's funny, he was getting out of the the greater Minnesota area so we can concentrate on the metro and now they're sure. kind of going back into the, <laughs> the greater Minnesota. But it, yes, it was a Bremer bank owned by Otto Bremer. Huh, that's that's a really interesting tidbit of Wasika history right there. I know. Jeez, get Joan Mooney on that. Yes. <laughs> Gosh. Well, I think I think that it's, uh, it's a great name change. I think the impact that Keene Bank has made in this community is just um, wonderful. Uh, the the culture that you have at Keen Bank is a ripple effect with your with your employees because they are all doing great things in the community, which we'll hear about from Alyssa and Sarah a little bit later. Um, I'd like both of you to comment just upon um, what it's like to work and live in our community. Tom, you're a native of Wasika, and and Bernie, you are a Wasikan at heart, um, and and what it's like to serve this community. Uh, well, basically working in this community, everybody, everybody in the, in the business world seems to work together fairly well. We have the chamber, we have all these organizations from Lions, Exchange Club, Rotary, and all of them try to work together. You have all these different organizations putting together. So working in the community is fairly easy. A lot of days you work with the same people that are volunteering with you, that you're out cleaning ditches with, or at a club meeting, or at whatever fundraiser it is, the church to the uh, to the arts council to Farm America. I mean, you're all kind of in it together in a lot of ways. Absolutely. So you know, my my perspective on it is a little bit different. I grew up in Minnetonka, and I think in a big city, you know, the neighbors on a couple houses on each side of you, but you have no no understanding of how a community runs or 
or what it takes to get involved, you know, with your local government, what it takes to volunteer and give back. This has been a, one thing I found early on is the heart and soul of Wasika is tremendous. I mean, we've had a lot of, a lot of things that make national headlines and a lot of times it's not the best news in the world. And when that happens, to see the community come together and support each other has been something I am very proud of and very, very proud to say that I am a part of, whether it's a fundraiser for someone um, that lost somebody or whether it's, whether it's uh, you know, helping someone that, that needs help through the Neighborhood Service Center. You can immediately connect with people that need help and be able to be there for them. And I think our role and our job as, as, as a local business is to be that arm to give back to the community and be available and in need for for whatever happens good bad or indifferent we celebrate the successes when the the, the boys go or the girls go to a sports event mm -hmm. and are going to state whether you know it's whether it's the marching classic we we stand out and we support all that whether it's treats in the streets giving away halloween candy mm -hmm. it's just you're part of a living breathing entity when you live in wasika and you're in a small community and that's that's the same way in all the other communities i don't want to just highlight wasika because it's the same thing for ellendale days it's the same thing in hope and, and Oatana has a tremendous spirit too but when you're part of a, a small community and you're in a place where you can make a difference I think it's very important that you do and that you're seen and that you're visible and the people that we hire and the people that are successful for us are ones that want to give back and they take the cues that they see from Tom and I and they want to emulate that and they know they're supported by being part of something and that continues to to grow and thrive Absolutely. And you, and both of you do a fantastic job at it. Um, last question before I wrap up with you two and I get Alyssa and Sarah in here. Back when you were 17, before kids, before reality set in, what did you envision yourself doing, Tom? Not coming back to Wasika was always the thing in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm going to a big city. Um, so, yeah, when I was 17, um, I started out in college in engineering. Yeah. I liked to. I still like to build stuff and play with things, tinker with things, fix things. I can pretty much find a way to fix almost anything if I have a little time. And sometimes even break it. Yeah, and break it. Well, fix it. how's he going to fix it if he's going to break <laughs> That's it? That's right. So, um, but the reality, yeah, I, I didn't see myself coming back to Wasika. And then I was living in the cities, and every time you wanted to go to the hardware store or the grocery store, it was 20 minutes. You got in the car, you fought traffic, you had, and, uh, so when they asked, dad asked to come back, I was like, you know, maybe it's not a bad thing anymore. But, it, you know, it's just everything you did took a lot longer, seemed to take a lot longer. And we're only basically an hour out of the city. It's 45 minutes to an hour, and you pretty much can do whatever you could have done if you lived there. So um, I think that's a lot of part of it. Well, you know what, Tom? As a CFO, I bet you're Bernie's Mr. Fix-It. He is. Yes. Okay. He's the first call for anything that happened. <laughs> Absolutely. Bernie, what did you think you were going to do when you were 17? Boy, I, you know, I, I know I give you a run for your money, but in, in my 600-class uh, uh, Minnetonka High School, I was voted the best sense of humor. So I don't know if comedy <laughs> would have been a part of any of that, but <laughs> I always knew finance would, would be a, a big part of that, whether it was a broker, whether it was um, – whether it was – you know, selling stocks or insurance. So I think, I think the finance arm was always something I wanted to do. Like Tom, I started out engineering at St. Thomas until I had my first physics class, and then I, then I was a finance and marketing degree. So physics I, will turn the best of them into finance. <laughs> that's <majors>. right. <laughs> You know, just like uh, chemistry turns turns a lot of those pre-med students into business majors. But I, I, I just, uh, and I tell, I've got a son that's uh, in college now, and I, I think it's important that I said, you don't need to know what you're going to do when you're, when you're that age, because you're, mm -hmm. the road to where you end up is a lot different than a straight line. And I think you've seen yeah, that absolutely. in your career, you know, it takes a lot of twists and turns. And I think you've got to be open for that. And I think if you just say, I'm going to do this, then you set yourself up for being disappointed. You've got to, mm -hmm. you've got to go to where your energies and excitement levels are and, and and make sure that you're getting something back and when you're you're giving something out so but before you 
you, you interview our mortgage people, I should probably really brag about them a little bit too. Do that. Yes. Um, you know, we have really built a first class mortgage department with Sarah and Alyssa and the staff under them that, that manages that department. And in fact, we were taking a look at the numbers of, of how many mortgages we've done just, just in the, the last number of years. And it's, it's, you know, darn near approaching a half a billion dollars. And oh, you can imagine wow. with the average size of the mortgages that are, that are done in the community and the surrounding area, that's a lot of experience for, for two, two people to manage. So when you're, when you're talking to them, know that you're talking to, to two of the best out there and they really know their stuff. So I'm going to tell them you talk very nicely. You bet. Oh, yeah. Very nicely. They do a phenomenal job. Thank you so much, Tom and Bertie. And we're gonna we're gonna be back with Act Two of Keen Bank in just a minute. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for everything you do at the chamber and keeping our business community moving forward. Definitely I appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome back to the Keen Bank episode of Wasika Small Town Big Stories. We're here in Act Two with Alyssa Bowers and Sarah Lynch from the mortgage team at Keen Bank. Welcome, ladies. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. I'm totally happy to have you here. And just so you know, you weren't in the room, but Bernie and Tom had such fantastic things to say about both of you and the success that you've had in the last couple of years and the team that you two have built. Just a just a powerhouse that you two are at Keen Bank. Thanks. It's good to hear. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love your social media presence that you two are in the mortgage team at Keen Bank. Um, talk about how you two um, both got into mortgage and, and your working relationship. Um, which one of you have been at Keen Bank a little bit longer? That would be me. Um, I have been there. It's 23 years. It was 23 years? 23 years. Sarah Lynch. Since, yeah, I was just a baby. Holy I'm cow. I'm so young still. <laughs> you are. Were you even Sarah Lynch back then? I was not. No. Oh, my God. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I was not. You started there as Sarah Benzo. Sarah Benzo. Yep. I was 19. Started working there kind of just on a whim and was a teller and uh, worked there a couple of years and then decided um, when I had my first daughter that I think I want that I wanted something a little more long term there. Mm -hmm. um, and an opportunity came up to go inside and when you say go department. inside, oh, no, I, they weren't having you be a teller out in the parking no, lot. No, I mean, that would have been cool, but yeah, I was in the drive up, You're which in the was drive still up. at that time, the little box out there that is now just the ATM. Sure. Um, so that was their, I was out in the drive through for a couple of years and then went inside and worked in the loan department, kind of ran through everything there was to do as a processor um, and dabbled a little bit while I was a commercial processor. I started to work on all the real estate and consumer real estate mm -hmm. parts of those, cons the commercial customers. And found that I really enjoyed that kind of the most of out of what I was doing, liked the social aspect of that and took the leap into lending and consumer real estate shortly thereafter. And here I am. Gosh, you really worked your way up. Yeah, that's, I sure did. That's awesome. Yeah. 23 years. That is so cool. Because you really, it, it is hard to find someone in their early 40s who have spent double digits that start with a two. Mm -hmm. at the same place. So I think, I think that's awesome, Sarah. Thanks. Yeah. I, I feel good about it. I knew, you know, as a kid, I always worked in retail and with people and kind of that service industry. I worked at nursing homes. I, you know, worked a lot of retail and I, mm -hmm. I did dabble a little bit in more that like manufacturing warehouse corporate vibe for a little bit. And it definitely didn't really fill my cup. So I knew that once I became a teller, even that that was more my niche. I really enjoyed working with people and that the face to face, the busyness of that part of the job. So, yeah. That's so cool. How about you, Alyssa? Uh, I started at a bank in Owatonna when I was 16. Um, went to school at MSU over in Mankato. So I started at a bank over there when I was 18 then, and I worked there through college for 19 years. Um, we bought a house here in Wasika back in 2013, and I commuted to Mankato for a solid five years. And um, I saw on Facebook that uh, First National Bank at the time was hiring for a particular position. And I was like, well, it's not exactly what I want, but just kind of got the wheels rolling in my mind thinking, I don't have to drive to Mankato. Yeah. Um, I could work in town. It worked out really, really well. Um, so yeah, after 19 years in Mankato, I moved um, jobs 
here to Wasika, and I've been here now for five years already, which Holy that's cow. crazy. Yeah, um, you know, and one of the best things about it, I when I worked in Mankato, there was a mortgage team there too, um, but it didn't it didn't feel like a team. Um, it felt like um, maybe each lender for their own. You know, mm-hmm. I, and, and not mm-hmm. anything bad about that bank. I really enjoyed working there as well. Um, but it just had a different dynamic. And so then coming here to Wasika, I think Sarah and I just, from day one, we just really, really worked well together and have been able to trust each other with each other's customers. If Sarah's out of the office, um, I'll help her customers and vice versa. If I'm out, I know that she has no problem covering for me and making sure that they're taken care of. So it's been great. So you did not know each other before you started working together? Right. No. Wow. Did So the friendship really blossomed at Keene Bank because you two are friends. Right. For sure. Yep. Oh, that does that make working together um, easier or harder sometimes? Oh, it, easier. I, yeah, I, don't, I think, don't think it's ever been hard. No, not at all. That's fantastic. And even though um, you're a team, is there that competition as well? Is there a healthy competition? I don't, I don't think I would call it competition. I think it, for me, when she came on board and started working there, it was almost like it was, I felt like finally I had somebody that had the same goals as me mm-hmm. and could help me like rise to where I knew that I could be. Um, so I don't think, I wouldn't call it competition. I think it's just, uh, it's I nice think to have a resource. Yeah. Like if I have a question on something like, Hey, I need to pick your brain. How can I make this work? Um, and so we're just able to have that dynamic that really benefits everything. both of us, our customers, the bank, everything. So, I mean, between the two of us, we've got so much experience. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yes, yes you do. Numbers, but so many years of experience that um, it's just super helpful to our customers, too, to have like this knowledge base right here between the two of us. Absolutely. And, and now that Keen Bank is uh, three, four locations, three? Three. Three. Um, do you service all those locations then? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's so exciting. So you're going to spend some time in Oatana with the new branch as well. Right. Yep. How, how are you going to, how do you split your time up? Do, do both of you, um, Alyssa, are you going to spend some time at Oatana while you're here? How, what is that going to look like for the two of you? We're going to flip-flop. We haven't decided which days of the week we're each going to take yet. Um, but we will, one of us will be in the office here in Wasika every day. Um, so we'll take turns. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll each spend at least, there'll be, one of us will be in Oatana one day a week. So there'll, there'll be coverage at least a couple days in Oatana, if not more. It depends on the needs. But yeah, we'll, we'll, there'll be someone in Wasika every day. So. And then if someone, let's say somebody comes to a, Alyssa for their mortgage and they're in <clears throat> Alyssa's mortgage pipeline, can they expect that if they have a question on their mortgage, Alyssa is not around is Sarah a backup for answering the question? Is that how your team works? Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, that is that is so helpful because so often if you go to a mortgage broker or a larger bank, if Alyssa's not there, you're not getting your question answered till Alyssa's back. So having that team atmosphere is just a wonderful service for the customer um, because if Sarah's on vacation, Alyssa's going to be there for you. How how much stress does that ease? from you to be able to have that backup? It's been great. Um, knowing that Alyssa is a, the my equal, if mm-hmm. not a, better at every, you know, we're... we're <laughs> cut. <laughs> Back up. Back it up. Yep. <laughs> knowing that Alyssa is my equal. Knowing that Alyssa is my equal has been great. Um, I know my customers are handled. I know that it's not someone that she's going to fight me on or mm-hmm. try and steal. There's never that worry. She's full of knowledge and can help with anything if I'm absent. And the same goes the other way. Yeah. And our, you know, when we visit with those customers, they know that they're just getting an answer for the day and they really appreciate that. Um, you know, when you're, you know, when you're buying a house, like it's a big deal. It's stressful. You have that tiniest little question that can probably wait, but you don't want it to wait. Um, So it is nice to have somebody available, whether it be Sarah I or any of the support staff that works there too. Somebody's always there. You're going to get one of like probably four people to answer your question. And somebody's in the know. Somebody knows. 
I mean, even if I'm not there, there's probably three people that know about that file. Whether it's Alyssa or the processor, um, they're going to get an answer. And nine times out of ten, they're usually contacting, contacting us on our cell phones anyway, so we're usually available even if we're not in the office. Yeah, because being a, a mortgage lender is an all-day, every-day job. Hours Holy day. cow. <laughs> yep. Midnight, there, 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> this idea of banker's hours is so outdated. That just does not exist anymore. How do you, how do you balance work life with this new concept of, I got to be available all the time for my clients because both of you have families. Um, both of you have, both you have three girls, right? Mm -hmm. Three sets of demanding girls. Right. <laughs> um, so how do you, how do you do that and still manage your clients? How do you do that, Sarah? Well, <laughs> um, I don't know that maybe I'm she, maybe, that. Yeah, yeah, maybe um, she's asking for advice. So for me, I, I actually have a separate work cell phone, which again, for me has worked very well. Um, and I'm, I'm very clear with my customers too about, you know, so they know that, what to expect, um, that it's okay to use that as a resource and to get, I prefer that as how mm -hmm. they get a hold of me, but also that they know that it is my work cell phone and that if I don't answer it and it's not working hours, they, they're, they're not trained, but I, I prep them for that. So mm -hmm. for me, it's great. Um, because I can on off hours, I can kind of use it at my leisure and, you know, I check it every day and I, on a weekend, I'll check my email and I'll check the text and I'll respond to things that are urgent, but I'm also able to disconnect, which has been good, good for, for you. me. Yeah. Well, and I think good most people understand that too. Um, as far as customers or clients go, you know, if they message us on off hours, they know that it's not going to be an immediate response. So you just do your best. I mean, if you're in the middle of something that can't be interrupted, that's life. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, just wait until you have five minutes. Yep. Setting those expectations up front, I think is, is very important because you, you do have to have a life, a life. And, and speaking of your lives, you, you've, you've got, you've got three kids each and you've got very, very busy lives. Um, talk about, talk about your kids and, and how you, how you do juggle your families because you are, you're two very, very busy ladies and you're both very involved in your community and, and your family's lives. Sarah? Um, you know, it, for me, I feel like I'm tapering off a little bit in the busyness because <clears throat> my kids are getting older. Mm -hmm. um, I have one that's it's her second year in college. Um, so I try and take the time off when she's home. She actually just left this afternoon and I'll probably see her at Thanksgiving, hopefully sooner. But <laughs> um, so that, you know, I'm down to really just two in the house. My old or my middle daughter is a senior. She can drive. Um, she kind of makes her own schedule, so it's a lot less that she's needing me. Um, and then my youngest is a freshman, so I'm in the stages where it's gotten a lot easier and a lot less hands-on. Um, but the bank has always been so flexible. When my kids were little, it I was it was constant. I, I did not have any free time. Um, I guess that's one of the great things about being at a local office and a, a community um, like this where I can be at all the things without having to feel like I've dropped the ball on something. And having the support of the management and the ownership of the bank where I can really raise a family and not worry about falling short. So they that has been the only reason that I've been able to be so present and raise them so well, I guess. Hmm. Uh, I'm not in the home stretch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have one at, <laughs> in her first year in college, I've got a junior and then our youngest is nine. So she, and, and she's, um, she's a handful <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you've met her, but, um, she's a wild one. So yeah, I mean, it's busy and, um, Kendall's a junior. She'll be out of the house in a year and a half. And then I've got, what did I say? I'm going to have six years mm -hmm. of giving rides. Um, before I have a driver in the house again. So yeah. And all the activities, volleyball and gymnastics and church things. And it just, it's never ending. It mm -hmm. doesn't stop. But that, what you said, Sarah echoes what, um, what Bernie had said a little earlier that they do have a very family focus at Keene and that the employees, the team members, pardon me, 
are not afraid to go and say, hey, I need to go out, I need to take off for this because I got to be there for my family for an activity or um, a hardship that we're suffering. And so it's nice to hear the employees say that too, that it's very flexible work, workplace um, and not just management saying that. So uh, kudos to Keen Bank on, on having that kind of culture um, that you lived through it and you're living through it. You know, and one other thing I just want to say in regards to that, it's not just family events too. Mm-hmm. Um, they're very encouraging for us to get involved in like volunteer activities. Mm-hmm. So if you want to coach or if you, you know, want to volunteer with the school or wherever you want to go, um, they've, they're always like on board for you to mm-hmm. do those things. Absolutely. Uh, because Keen Bank is a big supporter of junior achievement. You, uh, your bank is always participating in the bowl-a-thon for their, the big bowl. Mm-hmm. Yep, which I think is a fantastic event. Uh, of course, Alyssa serves on the school board, and I swear you are always running to something. Sarah. I mean, I I am part of Big Brothers Big Sisters. Yes. I have had a little since she was six, and she's a sophomore. Oh. So we've been matched wow, for a long wow. time. Um, and, you know, I was part of a couple different boards and then had to step back from those. I actually somehow ended up being an assistant coach for the gymnastics team the first part of last year. So, and they were very, I mean, the bank was very accommodating and flexible and, you know, I'm almost appreciative of me stepping up for that too. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're, it's been, they're very supportive of all of the things that come with being a parent and an active and an active member of Mm -hmm. this community. Yeah. That is, that is the true meaning of being a community bank. And, and you two are living proof of it. So um, on behalf of a community member, thank you for being uh, a member of a community bank and, and truly living that. Um, as, far as, as far as mortgages, do you, see, do you see yourselves ever doing anything besides mortgages in the bank? Is this where you're, is this where you're gonna be for the next, the next 23 years, the next uh, 20 years of experience? I'm not gonna retire doing this. <laughs> what? <laughs> What, what, what? We've talked about it, haven't we? Yeah, I'm gonna be a bread maker. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to being a teller. So you're like, gonna like so when you, I'm so you're, like you're ready taking the teller line for mortgage, and then you're gonna de yeah, back I think I'm gonna to end up right. It'll just be like a little yeah. You're gonna go back to credits and debits. It's yeah. stressful. I mean, what we do is, I mean, how would it not? I mean, when you buy your house, you're stressed. Well, your lender's trying to make it as seamless as possible so they are taking the brunt of everything even though you might not think that Mm -hmm. they are taking the brunt of everything to make it seamless for you right so it it's it's a lot and there you never really leave work because you're done Mm -hmm. you leave because you gotta go like it's i'm done for the day but it's not because the workload is done. I mean, how, how often does that ever happen? It well, like, well, I'm done for the day. Happen. Um, so for me, I love it. I can see myself doing this at least, I mean, really probably another 20 years. But I do see when I'm ready to slow down. Sure. Um, for sure. I would love to go back to just being a teller. Where you just, you know, get there, greet the customers, do the thing. They walk away, you're done. You get to go home for the night. Sounds great. No, fine. And I, and I really do enjoy that too. So yeah. I can see that. But that's a ways away. Well, your hairstylist and whoever does your color doesn't doesn't show your stress, I guess. <laughs> Funny enough, I was going to be a hairstylist before I was a banker. <laughs> well, I'm sure anything you do, you're going to excel at. In in the speaking of market trends, um, in, into that, are you are you seeing um, people taking equity out of their homes with the rising valuations like they were in in the mid 2000s? Um, because that was that was that became an issue. Because mm-hmm. I'm seeing my home value rise, and I get all these offers of like, oh, you can take the equity out. Well, I'm, no, because I don't know when the value is going to go down again. Right. To some extent, yes. Um, we have different parameters now. Um, we don't allow people to go out to 100 or 110 percent of their mm-hmm. home's value and take all of that equity out. And then, you know, a lot of times people will come in and they'll want to take some equity out because they're going to finish the basement or they're going to put on an addition. So yeah, they might be taking some of that equity out now, but most of the time they're putting it back into the house to improve the home. Um, and I think that's quite common right now. People are stuck mm-hmm. in, not, not stuck in their house, but they don't want to leave their house because they're at a they want to keep their two and a half percent yeah. rate. And so, right. you know, to sell that and purchase something new and have to pay seven or eight percent, you know, whatever, it, whatever it is, um, that's a huge increase in their monthly payment. So we are seeing more um, 
more improvement loans Mm -hmm. where they're using their equity, but nothing like it was. It's not just first mortgages you offer. You're also doing second mortgages. You're doing home equity lines of credits. What other products are you offering at at Keen? We do construction loans. Um, Sarah and I will help with consumer loans, some investment property Mm. when needed. Um, We don't get too deep into the investment property. Mm -hmm. It's not our wheelhouse, but we... sure know enough to be helpful. Right. And some some investment properties are sold on the secondary market, mm-hmm. so that ends up falling us in our lap. Um, bridge loans, you know, temporary financing, sure. that kind of thing. Um, anything government and conventional. Okay, so you do do FHA, you mm-hmm. do um, the rural development loans. Yep. Okay, VA, VA yep. loans. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's that's good to know um, because for a while there, not every bank in Waseca was doing the rural development and the VA loan. So I'm I'm happy to hear that that's changed. Um, what what is going to set Keen Bank apart from you know another another bank in the region? One of the I guess our biggest selling points and one of the things that we get the most positive feedback about is that we service the loan through the indefinitely really. So the customers know that when they call three months later or six months later or 10 years later, we're still their contact. So if they have a payment question or an escrow question or an insurance check that has the bank's name on it, that we're the people that they're talking to to come to that you know resolution or answer their question. Um, half the time, I have a lot of clients that are maybe in the cities or somewhere mm-hmm. that isn't that local, and they'll call and say, hey, I'm so-and-so, I did this. And I'm like, yeah, I know you, I remember you. And mm-hmm. it's so surprising that they don't, you can hear the surprise in their voice that they don't have to go through this whole backstory because we service it. I remember every file because I was very involved in it and I approved it and I did work on it and I, I have a lot invested in that. So I think that we're not just data entry, right? We take pride in knowing that it's a person and they're, they're our customer. So I think that really sets us apart from a lot of banks and brokers specifically too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Big time. Cause there's, there's plenty of home loans that get sold three, four, five, six times in the first couple of years. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to track who your servicer is. That is, that is a, a really big deal when someone can consistently call their bank and that's who the person is that they work on, especially right. when you've been there for 23 years. Right. That's, that is a big deal. Now, Sarah, being uh, a native Wasikan and and Alyssa moving here and growing your family here, um, I want you to talk about what what it's meant to to be to be in your hometown, Sarah, and and Alyssa to make this your hometown and to be able to work and serve this community, um, in the impacts that you've made and your volunteerism and and what that's like to to work and live here. Growing up here, um, I've always loved Wasika. It's a great location. It's kind of in the middle of everything. Everything is a quick drive if you need to get somewhere. But the school district always has been great for me. Um, and the community has, has always been very supportive of at least everything I've been involved in. You know everybody. I, the funny thing is I don't. Um, because growing up here, I had no family in Wasika except my immediate family. Right. My whole family is from out of state. Um, my parents are from Iowa. And so it, I was very jealous or envious of all of these other people growing up that had all their family and all their cousins in the school. But being able to be here now and raise my family here and have that experience for my kids mm-hmm. has been really refreshing to see and watch because I didn't have that. Um, so I think there again, working here also, then I'm always trying to make that connection and connect the dots and get a backstory just because I liked, I like the connections yeah, of being local. And because I was born and raised here, I feel like that my kids and my, they're getting what I didn't get when I was that age. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> um, so the first five years that, uh, was it five years for, we've only been here 10 years. Yeah. For the first five years that, um, we lived here, I worked in Mankato, and so there was a huge disconnect with Wasika. Um, you know, I was leaving for work at 7.30 in the morning. I was getting home at 6 o'clock at night. My kids were young, so they weren't involved in a lot of activities yet. Um, 
there was just a disconnect. I didn't know anybody from town. We didn't really have any friends here in town. Mm -hmm. And then, um, as the kids got older, that changed a little bit, um, met some people, met some friends and that was good. But then when I started at the bank here is when I was really able to start connecting with the community. Um, I think that you, and you had reached out to me for the leadership Academy after being Mm -hmm. at the bank for maybe a year. Um, And like you were very encouraging. So I really appreciate that in like getting involved in other things around your community. Um, So that really helped me with that. And since then, I think, I don't know which one of you told me this, but once you say yes to something, everybody's going to (laughs) ask. Absolutely. (laughs) So um, yeah, I'm busy and it's been fun getting connected in a variety of ways in Wasika, different organizations, different clubs, different boards, um, and getting to know people around town. So it's, it's fun to have that connection because I'd never really had that to a community before. And where did you grow up, Alyssa? Um, so my family's from Waldorf Pemberton. So okay. I, and then in the middle of elementary school, my parents moved us to Otana. Okay. Graduated from Otana, then went to school in Mankato, lived in St. Clair for a number of years and then here. So I've really been within what a 25 mile radius of Wasika my whole life. Yeah. You're very much from the area. Mm -hmm. Very, very much from the area. And as a team, I think like you mentioned, it has to be very helpful that Sarah does know a lot of people in town. So she can connect those dots of say, this is so-and-so and and they're married to so-and-so and they used to own that. And this is how they know this. Because that, as someone who hasn't lived here for very long, it can be tricky to navigate all of the relationships of this community because there are so many people who are related to so many people. (laughs) Holy cow. I know. (laughs) And I'm still learning it every day, and I've been here for almost 44 years. Because there's a lot of uh, intertwining in this community, and it's uh, it's what what makes the fabric of this community so strong, honestly. Um, the last question before we go, this is what I asked, uh, this is what I've been asking everybody lately. Um, back when you were 17, before kids and reality set in, what did you think you were going to be doing? What do you think you were going to be doing for a job, Sarah? I was going to be a hairstylist. I was yeah. enrolled twice. Um, my kids laugh about that because I cannot braid <laughs> and having three girls. I mean, I really am not good. So I definitely... <laughs> I definitely, probably, honestly, probably dodged a bullet to yeah. everyone that would have been my client. <laughs> well, the world's a better place, it, I guess, with you in the yep, mortgage biz. Yep. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Alyssa? I wanted to be a weather girl. <laughs> well, I think you probably could have done a bang up job at yeah. that. Uh, I think this is better. Sure. Sure. What do you think it's doing outside right now? Sunny. 60. <laughs> you did a good job. Yeah. You could have, I think you could have done yeah. it. Winning. We'll get, we'll get you over at KYC for an audition. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Well, I really appreciate the two of you joining me today. It was nice to have uh, Bernie and Tom in the first half, and, and it was nice to hear from the two of you to, to drive home uh, the culture that, that, that they've created at Keene Bank and, and the team that you two have built. Like I said, it's a tremendous mortgage team that the two of you have built at, at Keene. Um, not only the success, but the, um, the impact that you've made in the community with um, your volunteerism. I just think it's fantastic. So thank you so much for everything you do for the community. Thanks, Anne. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you so much to our sponsors, Bird's Eye Foods and iTron. Without them, we could not tell the big stories of our small town. And thank you to our production team, Small Town Media and Production. Join us next time for another episode of Wasika Small Town Big Stories.